thanks for sponsoring this camera stand again. You have to do two more tests here with the Google Power battery. I haven't even put my film shirts on or nothing. So this would be just a quick a quick introduction into this video, which will take a couple of days because I need to fully charge and discharge this battery twice here for this test. As you know, in the last video, as you know, in the last video, we have done the full capacity test on this battery here. So we had it charged to over 58 volts, 58.2 volts, and then we fully discharged, measured the capacity and all this kind of stuff. So the battery was fully top balanced at 58.2 volts with around um, 35 millivolt deviation or so. We did the full discharge then to measure the capacity and everything. When I have fully charged this battery again to 58.2 volts, in theory, we should see the same 35 millivolt deviation, right? I mean, that would be the ideal condition. That would be the ideal battery, the ideal battery cells. And we all know this is not going to happen because there's always some kind of spread, some kind of deviation while charging and discharging. Not all of these 16 cells in this battery are 100% equal. Internal resistance, temperature, the goop inside the aluminium container is not the same in all batteries. So there's some kind of variation. So what happens if we charge to 58.2 volts again? How much deviation do we have? And for this reason, Google Power has put an active balancer in this battery and let it run 24 seven. It runs all the time. In fact, it is running right now. See the, the yellow light there? There, you can see the yellow light. There's the balancer with the capacitors. It's running right now. It is, um, the battery is on, what is it? Yeah, 53.1 volts and is discharging with 2.65 volts. And in the last video I said, it is not good that this balancer is running 24 seven all the time because it will unbalance, in imbalance or dis disbalance your battery over time when it is in the flat part of the charge and discharge curves. You know, when it is not at 3.4, 3.45 volts, but below, it will, it will destroy your top balancing. And someone left a comment under the video and said, well, he's got the active balancer running for several years or months or whatever, and the deviation is only 20 millivolt or something. And it is not harming the top balance at all by keeping the balancer running all the time. And I'm always praying and telling you guys not to do that. You know, we have put the voltage trigger into the QSO battery here with the active balancer to only turn it on at 3.45 volts then. And we do the same with the knee active balancer in all the other batteries. They start balancing at 3.45 volts. And the same with the battery shelf and all these BMSs. The balancer only turns on at 3.45 volts and not all the time. And from all the testing we have done here in the garage, especially with the battery 1.0, we know the active balancer will cause your top balance to disappear. Yeah. And I've explained this already in the last video, so I don't want to do it again now. But here is now where the the tests come in. And I want to I want to fully charge this battery again now to 58.2 volts and want to find out what the deviation is. Because if this person who left this comment is right, it should just work, you know? We should see the same or similar deviation as we saw yesterday. No, it was the day before. Actually, it was two days before. It was on Saturday night. Was it Saturday night? I can't remember. When we fully charged this battery to 58.2 volt. So, how much deviation do we actually get? Is it better or is it worse or is it the same? I think it is a lot worse because the balancer is working right now and there's nothing to balance at 53 volts. At 53.11 volts, there's nothing to balance. Not Nothing at all. It shouldn't work at all now. And the deviation may be... Yeah. Yeah. See there, we've got 20, 19, 20, 20... 20, 20, 20, 19, 19, 20, 20, 19, 18. 
So we've got between we've got between 20 and 18. So we've got two millivolt deviation at the moment, but we are in the super flat area of the curve. We are at 80 percent state of charge. We check this in a second, and the two the two millivolt won't make a big difference in balancing because I think these active balancers they only work above five millivolt deviation or something. So in theory, it should not balance at all, even if it is running, but it should not balance at all. But as soon as I put some load on this battery now or charge it, start charging it from solar or from a charger, the deviation will go up. And then we have maybe like seven, eight or 10 millivolt deviation and the balancer will kick in. And it then balances in the flat part of the curve, shifts energy from one cell into another cell, which is not great. I mean, it is good, the balancer is supposed to do that, but not in the flat part of the curve. And this is this is exactly why all the BMSs have a balance start voltage. Because if balancing doesn't matter and I could balance the battery at any point of time, I could just leave the balancers running. I don't need the start voltage, I don't need to set a deviation, I just leave it running all the time. But this person who left the comment didn't say anything about the system he's got or she's got, how far, how far, how far he charges, what the settings are, how big the battery is, what the loads are, how much solar he is. There is a whole lot of information missing just by saying, well, it doesn't happen to me, my battery always stays balanced regardless. Even the balancer is running 24 seven. This is a bit of a broad comment, a broad argument there. And there's a lot more to it. So it all depends on your system design, on your, on your configuration, on your settings, how you use your battery, all this kind of stuff. Because the higher the current in your battery, the more deviation you have and the more spread you have. Because different internal resistance in the battery cells gives you different heat loss. So therefore, one cell burns more energy than another one in your same pack. And, and I want to test this here with the Google Power battery again. So we have now fully discharged this battery, as I said, and we are now back to, you know, back to 80%. Yeah, so this morning we were at um, 52% and then we charged the battery during the day to around 50 and um, to around 85%. So 52 62, 72, 82, so over 30%, 30, 35%, 33%. So we are fully charging the battery tomorrow when I want to start the test for it. It is 78% right now. I can still discharge the battery a bit and still would have a full charge tomorrow then. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be totally fine. So this will be test number one then tomorrow. Yeah, we fully charge the battery again to 58.2 volts and see if the deviation is worse or better than the last time we did. I will then fully top balance the battery again to 58.2 volts or something, whatever works. Let the battery fully top balance again as good as possible. And then we disconnect the active balancer and we do another full discharge of the battery into the Tesla and then again, fully charge it with the solar so first test with the active balancer, second test without the active balancer. And we always charge to these 58.2 volts and see what the deviation actually is then. Is it getting worse or does it matter at all? You, you probably understand now what I'm trying to do here now. We want to find out if we can leave the active balancers connected all the time. Or is this going to destroy your top balancing? Even it takes a couple of days to do all this testing. I put this all together in one video. This is just the intro to that video because I want to hear from you guys. What do you expect from this test? Do we see an increase in deviation by leaving the balancer connected all the time? So it balances most of the time. Or should we only connect this balancer at 3.45 volts? So yeah. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you expect? What do you think will happen? And as always, guys, thank you for all your emails. Please do not send me emails. I'm drowning in emails. All right, guys, this quick video for today. And we see us again tomorrow for the big test.